Well, hello and welcome to episode 40 of the Make Music Income podcast. Uh, we are closing in on episode 50. We're going to have to do something <laughs> special. I can't imagine. Well, I think we'll be on location uh, in Hawaii for episode 50. Really? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if you got that memo. It's going around the Make Music Income headquarters. Uh, that they're thinking about flying us out to Hawaii for the 50th. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm, I'm coming, right? It's either Hawaii or to a mountaintop <laughs> in Japan. I can't remember. It's one of these. It's a very big deal. Amazing. So make sure you keep watching these podcasts. <laughs> okay. And, and then we're going to have to use, like, Zoom to, like, put scenes behind us. You yes. That's, I totally. <laughs> it's more interesting than, like, my current background, so <laughs> for sure. Well, at least we have guitars and keyboards, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, today we are talking about using vertical reels, TikTok, short types video for your music marketing, for your music teaching, for your music just general goofing around. Uh, is it something we need to be doing? If so, why? Is it a waste of your time? If so, why? Uh, and here's the most important question for this podcast and this program. Will it make you money? And that's the question I want to know as probably you do too, but my name is Eric Copeland of Make Music Income and sitting next to me, a man who, like me, has a face for short media, <laughs> Stephen Bedall from the Production Media, the Production Music Academy. Hey guys. Stevie B, <laughs> sorry, I cracked myself up. Stevie B, what have you been up to this week? Um, I don't have a lot to uh, to report, man. I've been, you know, I've been busy writing uh, music. That's, you know, that's what I do, um, pretty much. And uh, to taking care of the members in the academy. Um, I'm, I don't know if you got a chance to see the uh, the interview I did with uh, Mr. Alex B. I did. Um, that's awesome. Which I posted uh, uh, yesterday, I guess. Um, yeah. Not the yesterday of the day that this is going live, but is in last Wednesday. It doesn't matter. Um, but it was a great interview. I think Time the members, <laughs> yeah, the members really enjoyed it. And um, man, it was just, he's just so awesome. And it's just really motivational. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, the members really appreciated that as well as people on my YouTube channel just appreciated seeing um, what it looks like to just, you know, um, apply yourself and be persistent. Yeah. Um, so that was cool. And uh, yeah, just writing a ton of music, man. I'm writing a, some trip hop music for art list. Um, kind of like, 90 very 90s inspired you ever listen to uh like rjd2 and that kind of stuff that was like or like uh uh groove armada back in it's like you know that that sort of early uh, early uh, late 90s early 2000s vintage electronic music um which is great uh so i'm writing that kind of stuff for artlist that's been fun uh what else is going on i'm i don't know that's what i'm doing (laughs) Really have, making um, videos yeah i'm making videos oh and i guess the, something that's you know going to be uh very um important for th- this discussion is that and i'll just i'll end my my weekly recap on this note is that tomorrow uh this friday um i am going to be putting out my very first youtube short that will be uh something yeah I'm, i've never done a short um, I've done lots of content for you know TikTok and, and Instagram Reels to kind of get me prepped for it, um, but I am very curious to uh, yeah start getting into like shorter content for YouTube. I hope it doesn't mess with the channel. I hope it just brings more uh, attention to the channel. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens, man. I'm I'm curious, but uh, you'll see it um, tomorrow. I have thoughts about that. We'll talk about that when we get to uh, these shorts. Yeah, with our conversation because I have thoughts about YouTube Shorts as opposed to. TikTok and and Instagram and Facebook Reels and any place else that has short media like this. I just I just thought of one more thing too. Actually, um, uh, something that I should mention that I've been doing this last week is I'm trying to get organized, and I really felt that that last conversation that um, we had I can't remember if it was if it was episode 38 or 39, but having I think it's 38, um, having a list of all the things that you can do with one song, right? Um, that conversation was just so uh, it really lit a fire under my butt, and I was like, yeah. "Okay, I gotta actually make uh, like a proper list um, for well, myself." Well, I'm, I'm I'm making one, and and I, I can send it to. I, I'm going to put it out as a free uh, checklist as one of my free things on my channel. It's going to cool. be on my t- site, 
and because I already made I made it for the video and so I've already got it in checklist form literal checklist form so I'm I'm gonna be putting that out and probably on uh, I don't even know if maybe even by tomorrow mm -hmm. having it available for everybody to use as a checklist and if you see things in it that you might want to add that you say oh you missed this or this let me know but that's going to be a, a piece of free content on my site I have a few things that I give away for free and uh, since I've already got it done it's kind of like a little free ebook type of thing a little free PDF sweet so I'll send that to you and if you have any changes let me know and then it, you know we'll just continue to build that thing so. absolutely man i um yeah i mean i started creating like a little google document um for myself and uh i mean checking yeah i mean i got so much so much back catalog to you know to use and to upload into places that i haven't and um it's really time for me to get like super organized i don't think i'm a disorganized person but uh there's a lot of work that needs to be done um and uh yeah, so that conversation was really great, and if anyone missed that episode, go check it out. I thought it was a, it was a great conversation, and it really got me motivated. So episode thirty eight, cool. I believe. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely, and uh, I mean, I I also, and like you, I I create Excel sheets and all this kind of stuff that I keep everything on. But the I like the checklist. I keep the checklist right in my in my lot uh, my mac notes mm -hmm. uh, apple notes mm -hmm. and because they have a nice checklist feature that you can just check things off and it goes to the bottom of the list once you get it done and so yeah um i use that for my to-do list every day and um so and i use it for the notes i'm reading off now which i will read totally. well i've been trying <laughs> getting to my what i've been doing this week yeah. i've been trying my best to get up early uh more and get things done for clients for myself and for the good of all mankind. Uh, I tried in vain to do a restart of my Hello Composers channel, a live video, which was fun for those who were there, meaning Arco and I. <laughs> I'm so sorry I, I missed that. I had to, I'm gonna have well, to catch it. Well, it wasn't just Arco. I, there, Isomatic was there. There were a few other people there in and out. Uh, and uh, we, I think we had up to 10 or more at one time. But I had audio cutouts happening. I didn't know oh, until no. afterwards. Uh, I had a bad camera angle. I had the the blur thing on, and so I was reading from my iPad. Whenever I would look down, the the bl it would get completely blurry, and so oh, I yeah. just said, you know, that's not the way I because I the the video itself was had a message. It wasn't just a kind of a live off the top of my uh, head type of thing. So I've reshot the episode, and I'll be putting up an edit, edited version of it probably this weekend. Um, and I, I think it's still a, mess, a valid message about starting and restarting as a composer. And, I, and it kind of went along with the theme of me restarting the channel a little bit. And so that will be on HelloComposers.com. So make sure you go over there. And uh, I'm also going to put that out as a podcast every week and see how that goes. Uh, but anyway, uh, besides that, uh, I've been working on a new contemporary classical piece that is getting completely out of control. Uh, originally, it was written for just five instruments, but now it has demanded full orchestra. Songs demand things. You will start writing them, and you think, oh, it's going to go here, and then it says, no, here's where I'm going to go, and here's what you are going to do with me. It's like it holds you at gunpoint, and you have to do what it says. And this uh, is a classical piece, so... It looks like it's it's shaping into a full orchestra thing, which means it's yeah. going to take forever. It's such an interesting to, point. I, I mean, to, songs really, uh, productions really shape themselves, don't they? You know, you have to listen to what they ask of you. It's it, it's it's like, yeah. We should do a, a two-parter a video that I start on the Composer's Channel talking about how compositions do that, and then... You do. We do one on your channel talking about how the production then decides yeah. what it needs. That's a great you know? idea. Yeah, totally. But that's happening. Uh, I put two new sheet music pieces up to arrange me. dot com. I had another sale this week of sheet music. Sweet. Um, I uh, pitched some new music to Crucial with their new uh, public domain originals and covers thing. I don't know if you've been there recently, but they now have three different. Um, three different like areas right. and it's original songs public domain songs or cover songs Crazy. so I pitched three covers that I have and now you can pitch six songs at a time three being covers and three being 
uh, originals or original arrangements. So question, do they, do they allow you to cover any songs or do they have a list? Any of, song. Really? Nope. I mean, yeah. wouldn't it, yeah, they'd have to get like the, like the, the license to rip. Well, here's the deal. The client is going to come in and take care of that. The client's going to say, I need Staying Alive. Do you have Staying Alive? And, which is, happens to be one of the songs I sent them, this jazzy version of Staying Alive. And uh, they're, then if that client's coming looking for Staying Alive, they're prepared to pay uh, a, a, a f- the fee for that. They've probably even checked it out, what it's going to cost to do to use they're not using the master recording they're using someone else's like cover Mm -hmm. so it's probably not going to be as much and they just check with the publisher and and see if they can use the song and what the fee is going to be um it's not like using a a a licensed uh, or licensing a an actual master of the bg's song of course live of course so it's it's way less and so that kind of thing uh, another place that's doing this is the arrange me company that i was just talking about people can upload any arrangement they want to that and arrange me will take care of that now you only make a dollar or two from each sale but you can cover anything call me maybe uh, i think dave uh croft has a range a string arrangement of call me maybe you know up the, on there and uh now he does he make much from that no he only makes a buck or two but that's because they completely take care of all the all the the publishing, the publishing things involved in that so that's what crucial is doing that's what arrange me does there's someplace else that does that um i can't think that's of but I, I i think you're going to see that happening across the board as companies go boy if we could get cover tunes and and have a have a easy way to license those once and and, and then not pay people much for them hmm. uh, you just wouldn't get paid as much but uh anyway so I did that with Crucial um, and pitched some new songs there. I pitched new music to Artlist, and oh, you did nice. Uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I already got a no. When you really? when you get a no, you get a no fast. Damn, you they know, got you back get to you within no. like a day or two. Yeah, within a day or two, you ask anybody who 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 get who tries to get to Artlist, and usually you'll get a no very quickly, quite quickly. Wow. Okay, and that's been my experience with them, except for once when I never heard back. And I thought, so you're saying there's a chance, but uh, never heard back on that one. I don't know what was. I think that was jazz too. It's crazy was fast jazz response. I mean, it's like thing. people are waiting almost a month to hear back from Motion Array, uh, and sometimes the the application gets lost in the queue, right? It just kind of sticks, stays there, yeah. doesn't really do anything, and you have to. And like, it might have been because it was a jazz, you know, type of thing, and they just might have thought we don't need jazz. They you might know, just have said thing. like, no, that's just not yeah. what we're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was Latin jazz. It was a very specific form of jazz. So they might have just said, that is not something that we need right now. Right. So those kind of things, or if you sent them classical, or if you sent them uh, something else, you know, they may just go, no, I don't think so. But I've got some other plans for art lists. They do have classical. Then. So yeah. that might yeah. be something It's a possibility. Uh, I, I've worked on a new hymn arrangement, and it's really nice. Uh, I played it yesterday or the day before on the piano, and, and it worked out great. And so now I just have to press record and play it into Logic. Um, I'm really excited about putting that out. And then uh, I have a lot of new stuff going to, Sp- to Spotify and, and the DSPs nice. from all my different brands. I just filled out a few more pitches today on Spotify for Artists. We'll see if any of them. So I've got like four or five poles in the water <laughs> with the Spotify for artists. We'll see yeah. if anything happens there. Yeah. Uh, I got some new starts. I'm going to finish out for stock. I'm working on a new ebook about sync. And like I said, my free ebook checklist thing that I'm, I'm getting ready to put out. Cool. And I put a new short out to IG, uh, uh, Instagram and TikTok yesterday. And they are neck and neck. One of the, fun parts about putting stuff out to TikTok and Instagram is watching how they do on both different platforms. Yeah. And uh, right now they are neck and neck about two or three, about 300 ish uh, views from since yesterday. But the way things have been going on there, I expect them to go up around 500 or more. We'll see what they do. So that kind of brings us to what we're talking about today. And that mm-hmm. is, Short media, is short media worth your time as a musician, as a educator, as a uh, online music personality of any kind? You could be someone like Steve and I who, who uh, do uh, YouTube channels and talk about stuff and, and put those things up there as almost marketing. 
as much as, uh, you know, versus, and I've seen you've done short media that's been music based. I've done short media that's been, you know, comic based and goofy. And uh, I think all of that works. Neither of us, as far as I know, have d done any dancing uh, videos yet. There, but, will, there um, will be no dancing videos <laughs> from my end. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there will be I with think I'm either. past the age where I'm allowed to do that, <laughs> unfortunately. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Stars are doing it. So, yes, it's fun to watch the numbers when I put a TikTok in, a, in an Instagram out like I did yesterday. Um, but what it's like seeing a double rainbow. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to get a 500 or a thousand uh, views on Instagram? I mean, that's not, I, is it like Facebook where people are just scanning by and they, as they go by it yes. and it plays it's for impressions. a second? Then it's, it's very much an inflated number and it's just impressions, right? It doesn't translate to uh, follows necessarily. You can have yeah. uh, thousands of views on your shorts. Um, and it, all it is is really just the amount of impressions that you've, that, that, you know, YouTube or TikTok or whatever platform decides they want to show. Um, and it really is, you know, from what I've seen, it's not a huge indicator of like how many people are actually going to come and follow your channel. Um, I think in order for there to be some like tangible actions from people like a follow uh, or a subscribe or whatever, um, you need to see impressions in like the in like the tens of thousands. It's got to be huge. It's got to be a lot. Um, you got to kind of like go, you know, a bit viral. <clears throat> um, we'll talk about I, I want to talk about the creator funds. And I looked up a little information. Maybe you did, too. But I looked up a little information about you know, how to get paid by TikTok and Instagram yeah, and, and YouTube good, shorts and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so my questions are, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's say I get a thousand views, which I have quite a few times. <clears throat> I've had more than a thousand mm -hmm. quote unquote views on an Instagram reel or on a TikTok, both. Now on, on, um, does it, does it bring any, will it bring any income? Will it bring people over to YouTube? Will they go and follow my link from my, uh, will they be interested enough, and I don't think they will, to, to come over to YouTube and start following? I did a, um, I, I mean, what do you think about that? I wanna, I wanna look up a, a poll that I did recently. Okay, well look, here, <clears throat> here's my, my thoughts on it. It's, uh, my take is that there's absolutely gigantic, huge potential um, not only for discovery, but for for growth on YouTube from uh, the use of shorts. Um, but also there's there's potential for crossover from TikTok and Instagram Reels onto YouTube as well. Uh, I've seen, um, you know, for some time now uh, that there's uh, many YouTube accounts that I come across because I watch YouTube shorts. Um, I try not to spend too much time on, on TikTok, but uh, I do occasionally look at the shorts on YouTube. And I've seen that there's many accounts on YouTube that um, are, are blowing up and only post shorts. It's very, very interesting. Um, I've heard many YouTubers also mention that they've started out on TikTok and they've grown an audience on YouTube through their exposure on TikTok. Um, I follow a few of those guys. Um, yeah. And so I think that there's there's many many examples of very successful crossovers, and I think that uh, it really depends on the type of uh, the delivery of the content on, for shorts. I mean, you and I have been uh, sort of repurposing some of our content for for shorts, and I yeah. think that that's been a really good primer for me to kind of get into the habit of doing that. Um, I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen it really, you know, make the needle move on on Instagram. Uh, with TikTok, I've seen a little bit of growth. Um, yeah. So with Instagram, it seems kind of like you know, meh, maybe that's not really doing much. Um, but I think that the the in order to be really successful with shorts, you really have to produce content that's like explosive, fast paced, uh, and like sort of you know, viral type content that's going to work for that for that format in order to yeah. see the growth. Um, so, you know, uh, in terms of like monetizing it and making money, then it's really just sort of like one of these things where if you can like get eyeballs on your YouTube channel and bring in an audience through shorts, then it's like, a you know, 
um, that is sort Maybe. of a path to monetization. But directly monetizing it, I mean, I mean, yeah, it's not really meant for that, right? You know, I mean. So uh, you know what? Last week, I did a short. I I, I was going to put the same short out that I put on TikTok and Facebook. It wasn't this week's. I think it was last week's. And or TikTok and and. and reels i put the same one i was i put the same one up on youtube but they said you can do it on the, you don't have to do it on your phone you can do it on your computer it, and so i did and i put it up and it allowed me to monetize it oh yeah interesting well you can't you you can't you're not supposed to be able to monetize shorts from oh. what i understand but Weird. this option when i put it up there maybe it's a loophole or something but when I put it up through, uh, first of all, <clears throat> it didn't look the same. Um, and I had to make, it was a very odd experience. I'll, I'll probably do it. We're, but let me give you my thoughts on YouTube shorts um, as we're, as we're talk, as we're, since we're talking about YouTube and, mm -hmm. and you talking about YouTube shorts next week. Um, I, don't, I, I think I've decided to not put YouTube shorts up um, on my main channel. Right. As much. I mean, I don't put them up that often. And the ones I have put up, they've gotten respectable three or 500, you know, views eventually. The one I just did is only at about 100 right now, but it, it'll probably have more than that down the road as, as people discover it. But since they are clips from YouTube videos, yeah, I don't know if it makes as much sense to put them up there. I mean, it kind of does because some people will find that and don't watch the channel especially deep into the videos to see that little nugget that I, I pulled up that yes. was 30 minutes into a conversation you and I had or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so maybe they would, but I, I think I'm almost thinking about the possibility of starting a, a, whole, a whole channel just for the shorts. Yeah, well, there's, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of YouTubers do that. Um, I've seen actually a lot of YouTubers uh, go as far as to just create like a live stream uh, you know, channel separate from, from their, yeah. uh, from their actual videos channel. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of Podcast different configurations. Um, I think, yeah, for my strategy is going to be, is going to be creating, uh, shorts that are, uh, like unique for, for that type of thing. Right. You know, I'm not going to repurpose any of my older videos for shorts. Um, they're going to be videos just for YouTube for shorts. shorts. Yeah. Um, I am a little bit, yeah, a little, a bit worried about messing with the channel, um, and, and not having them be separate, but I, th I've seen enough people do it that I think I'm like, I'm, I'm ready to give it, uh, give I it look a shot. At, I look at Clint's channel, his YouTube channel. Yeah. I follow him on YouTube. I follow him in, on everywhere, but, um, I see him, he is all, he is a crazy man with, with short media. Dude, and exactly. he's all over Instagram and uh, I guess uh, TikTok too, I think. But because yeah. that's how my Instagram blew up is his shorts that he that his reels that featured me and people came over and started following me. And so yeah. my YouTube, I mean, my uh, Instagram tripled or doubled at least. But um, I will. So getting back to YouTube shorts, though, when you go to his YouTube channel, it's a mess. There's a thousand like shorts and then there's one or two of the other things and and maybe it all works together for good i don't know i i it just looks messy to me yeah i think i think i want it'd be like going to a a, a place that you watch movies and then they start also airing cartoons and that are short and then they have movies and then they have cartoons and you're like okay i, I really just want the movies and and so i i kind of feel like that's the difference between lot between uh, I don't think lives and, and, and edited videos are as different as shorts and longer and, and wide video. You know what I mean? Y yeah, I, knew, I do know what you mean. And I've, <clears throat> I've gone and ch checked out a few YouTube channels that are doing what Clint does, which is just like a, everything, you know, like live yeah, stream, mismatch. regular yeah. videos, YouTube. Yeah. And, it, and I agree that it does look messy. But I think um, that there's definitely some like organizing you can do on the channel to make it look less crazy like you know th doing what we do which is you can you can arrange your your channel to have categories for one mm -hmm. thing um most 
creators, most YouTubers have uploads as their first uh, category. So you'll see everything yes. uh, that gets yes. uploaded, but you can change that so that you can just categorize everything um, mm -hmm. and, and make it look a little bit uh, more tidy. But I do agree that on like my OCD gets kind of triggered when I go to uh, one of these channels and I just see like a mess of everything and I'm just like, whoa, it's like, <laughs> where do I even start? Like, a, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. Um, but yeah, there's ways to, there's ways to make it look a little bit more tidy. So and we're looking at this through the lens of YouTube creators who make our make a bit of our living, maybe a small bit, but a, a certain amount of our living through YouTube channels. They make us music. They make us income, which is based in music talk. So it's music income through our YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. So as we're looking at this, like I don't want anything to mess up the YouTube channel because I, it's been hard enough to build it as it is. And so uh, the shorts conversation on YouTube is is really interesting. And I just saw on the YouTube news the other night that they're not going to have the wide um, thumbnails anymore where they have the vertical in the middle and then the kind of like other, ver uh, other stuff on the sides. They're going to change that to a four by three image or something like that or a three by four image or whatever okay. so that it zooms in on the on the part of the vertical okay so good, that when it good. comes up in the feed you won't see that three that image with the little good vertical I, thing in there anymore i hate that i hate yeah. that I, i'm so glad that they that they they uh are going to do something about that but it they will brutal. zoom in on the the image so it might be something might be cut off so if you like yours right. might be just be the top of your head and the bottom of your microphone or something okay. Okay. for the for the channel if this was a uh, if this was that, but you know, I, I just I think that's that's an interesting idea. I because when I'm going down through my list, I will avoid shorts a lot of times. When I'm watching YouTube, mm -hmm. I'm not there to watch shorts. I'm there to watch YouTube's. I'm there to watch longer form content. That um, and I think especially when I watch it, I watch it on TV now. I know most people watch it on their phone, but uh, I watch it on TV and some people might watch it on computers, some people might watch it on an iPad. And I think if you're on anything but a phone, then short media is no fun. It's really not even relevant uh, if you're yeah. unless you're on your phone. Um, the, yeah. the only time I look at any type of shorts is, is on my phone for sure. Um, and for me, I, I do both, right? So, like, I'll, I'll I'll watch videos on my on my laptop while I'm making breakfast or or, or dinner or something like that, or just chilling. Uh, but a lot of times, in between, like an intensive like you know um, work session, I'll do like 45 minutes of like deep work, and then I'll just take like five, um, like a little breather, and I'll just pull up my phone and I'll watch a few shorts just for some you know quick entertainment, um, and yeah. that's where I'm getting exposure to all the uh, to these shorts, and I'm seeing how you know it really is a matter of uh creating content that's ideal for that that type of delivery um the stuff that's getting you know uh getting delivered to me is like it, it, it's usually you know very funny um you, you'd be great at it right because it's like it's it's comical um for, for either comical or like uh, uh sh shocking <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. or just like super fast paced and like interesting and it's uh, you know, I, honestly, man, like a lot of um, I've discovered a lot of of creators um, through shorts um, mm. that I thought were really interesting. And then I went to their actual channels and see that they have long form content as well. Um, w one of my uh, um, one of my guilty pleasures is a. Uh, is this guy um, called Mr. Ballin? He's huge on YouTube, but he started off on TikTok. He's um, he's a storyteller, and he just tells these like you know scary, uh, mysterious stories. And and he he started creating short form content on TikTok, uh, and now uh, does you know lots of long form content on YouTube as well. And usually like puts you know it's usually like three stories in one on his um, uh, on his long longer videos, and they're all really you know they're interesting, and it's usually stuff that you know I'll listen to uh, before. Uh, you know, you know, just to chill um, if I'm bored or whatever. But uh, he's done exceptionally well, and it all started out as sh as short form content for him. Let's uh, let's talk a bit about the time it takes us to make and post a short or a and and when I say a short, we're just gonna use short as a shorthand for a, a, a vertical video that we can put on TikTok. Um, you know, shorts on YouTube are still at a one-minute limit, I believe. Yeah. 
Um, everything else is starting that. to expand because yeah, expand uh, I think one of them's up to three minutes now. I think TikTok then, is three minutes or something now, isn't it? Yeah, and then another's a minute and a half. So you have to think, well, if I'm going to make this for all three, I'm going to have to make it at one minute. But, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, like you, have been really f- defaulting to, uh, especially for Instagram and TikTok, to making uh, vertical snippets of longer conversations that are happening on my YouTube channel because – the people on Instagram and TikTok are not watching on YouTube, maybe. And so that's a way to get new people. Um, so, you know, it, but it usually takes me about a half an hour to go in and mess around on, on, uh, to, on, 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 what do I use? Final Cut. And, you know, make it, it's not hard to do. It's, it's not just super hard. It just takes no. a minute. But, uh, and then make it. And then sometimes if I've made one, then I can make a bunch from that video just because I've got the template kind of down and it's not hard to make then some other ones. But uh, so what about you? How long does it take to make and post one of those things? Well, you? yeah, it's good. It's a good question. So the so this short that I'm going to put out on YouTube tomorrow, um, it I'd say it took about an hour. Uh, Is it also going to Instagram and TikTok? Yes. Yeah, it's going to okay. it's going to go everywhere. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to see how well it does on YouTube. I'm not, I'm not expecting anything crazy. Uh, now, what but, is it based on? Is it based on music? Is it based on your YouTube channel? Or is it based on original content you made? It's based on on a track that I recently wrote. And it's it's very similar to uh, the, the some of the production walkthroughs I do. Yeah. Um, except it's just like a super short, uh, fast-paced version of it. Did you shoot it with your phone or, did you, or are you pulling it from someplace else? So I recorded a bunch of snippets from my DAW. Uh, using OBS and then I also uh, recorded yeah just using my phone vertical of course uh, and and then I edited it all together the editing is what takes the longest right you know but um, in the two years or so that I've been on YouTube maybe more now um, I've gotten pretty fast uh, at editing in Premiere Pro and it's a real valuable skill to have because um, you know I remember thinking back to some of the first YouTube videos I used to do it just took me like an absolutely atrocious amount of time to to edit these videos because it was so slow yeah. um and it was brutal uh but once you get fast at editing then uh it really helps so i think i put about an hour into it um it, it was actually kind of nice because you know youtube videos as you know um can take a lot more than that to make um because they're usually you know longer they're usually sometimes 10 20 minutes um, and that's a lot of editing so mm-hmm. it was kind of nice to have this like little mini project to edit it, it was it didn't take too long, but an hour is a valuable uh, amount of time. You know, I could do a lot in an hour. So, we'll do you see. know if on YouTube Shorts you can make uh, you can put a video that it goes to? Can you can you push it to another video? Can you push it to a regular video? Like a redirect, or does it just go to the next short? I think I think it just goes to whatever YouTube thinks that you're going to enjoy. Um, but I don't know if you can like redirect it. Uh, I don't I don't think you can. I, like the I, one I, I made t- online, I could put an end screen on it, and I, I don't know how I did that, but um, really, it'd be interesting if you could put end screens on them to like say, hey, I just did a new video. You're gonna, really going to want to see this, and you just shoot it live talking, and you're really going to see – like I, I was thinking about doing this for my live tomorrow. is just say, hey, folks, tomorrow – I just put a thing out, get ready, I'm going to be talking about blah, 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 and make sure you watch that and go to it. You can just go to my channel right here, uh, click right here where the button is, and make sure you subscribe because we want to make blah, blah, blah. Okay. And you can I, do I, like I little be, previews and I, promos and things like that with I it. I could be wrong maybe. about this, but I, th- I think w- what's happening maybe is that you're you're able to do those things in the back end of YouTube Studio. Um, and like set an end screen, all those things, because YouTube doesn't know yet that you're creating a short. It doesn't actually know that it's supposed to be a short. The only thing that that it it go it has to go on is that you write hashtag shorts, correct? Yes. So yes. So if if like it's not going to just automatically take those like end screened and options away from you, um, uh, because you wrote hashtag shorts, um, like on on the description, right? It'll YouTube Studio will just assume that you're doing a regular video, so you'll, it'll yeah. give you those options. But once it gets converted to a short and you write shorts, it's not going to do any of that redirect stuff because yeah. uh, that's just not how it works, right? Like every time I've been scrolling through shorts, it just like automatically goes to a, a new, uh, yeah. you know, a, a new, new account. Short. So yeah, 
All right, so we've talked about how long it takes us to make the post and, and post it. Um, it. Where to post and how they react. So let's start with Instagram Reels. You put it up there. That's probably my favorite place just because I think it's easier. You know, I have a bigger following on Instagram. I don't know about you, but my Instagram following is way bigger than my TikTok following, which is just about hit. It's 50 or 60 followers, I think, or something like that. Instagram, when I post there, not only do I usually get a decent like view rate of, of stuff, because now that I'm at six or 700 subscribers or whatever you call them there, followers, um, the, I get I get quite a bit of, of, of views, but and, and people actually becoming followers because of those views. Mm-hmm. Almost every single one brings at, brings at least a few uh, followers. It brings people who subscribe to my Instagram. And so that's that's great. That's what you want, if anything. I still am not so sure what Instagram does for you. Um, I did want to say that, um, no, I'll save that for later. Uh, I, I took a poll on this and I'll save it for later, but um, TikTok for me, uh, I put it up and it does usually either well or kind of average, but I, um, I, if I get a follower, it's like one every other video or something like that. It's mm-hmm. very slow to get mm-hmm. new followers there. Um, YouTube, uh, sometimes they start slow and they go okay, but I don't know, I just don't know about that. And Facebook is another place you can put reels now. But I'm I'm kind of not on Facebook these days. I'm kind of me neither. Like off Facebook, and so uh, I just I, I think I I just got tired of pushing to friends and family, and I just wanted once M- make music income got going, and I found an audience, and like you have, that's probably more interesting to post to than people who don't aren't really interested on Facebook, who just know you. They're like, uh, you're sending me something again, you yeah. Know, well, so I, I have my uh, my my reels on Instagram uh, post to Facebook automatically. Yeah. But I yeah. I don't lo- <laughs> I have no idea what's going on on my Facebook account. I never check yeah, in. Yeah, me like either. A, I just uh, every time I, I log into Facebook, I get like this this uh, this I don't know sense of dread <laughs> in the bottom <laughs> of my stomach. I just really don't like it. Um, it asks you if you're a hacker. Well, are you a hacker? Because no one's been on this account for a long <laughs> yeah, while. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so how do, how does it react? Does it grow your following? What are your What are your <sighs> experiments with Instagram and TikTok? Well, my, Let's, my we've talked about YouTube is, Shorts, but yeah, like my, my Instagram growth is just is um is it just kind of trucks along slowly, and I don't really yeah. know if um it's it's hard to say whether it's a result of of the of the shorts and the stuff that I'm posting, or if it's just people seeing my Instagram links in my YouTube videos and stuff, it's really yeah. really hard to say what's responsible for the growth. But you know, it's it's trucking along. Uh, it's nothing uh, you know exceptional. I think I'm at like about 160 or so people on the Production Music Academy Instagram. Uh, sorry, 163. So it's growing like steadily. Like yeah. you know, it, there's a follower every, you know, once uh, one or two followers every. Uh, you need to put one up of you and Dave talking and and hash, and you know tag him. Yes, and you'll absolutely. find that helps. And um, I think I, th- and I think you for do me, with me, the, so the, that helps. The, yeah, I love. Yeah, I need, I need to collaborate with more with other users like you've done with Clint, uh, which is a great idea. And I think that. But he's got sixteen thousand followers. I mean, it's, so it's, that's it's a big growth is insane. Yeah, it's it's just yeah. nuts, and, and and it's impressive. And I think that you know, I think the first the first step for me, and you've heard me say this so many times this year, is just is just getting into the into the posting zone, into into getting yeah. into the habit of thinking about it. Right, um, that's this first step. The next step is like learning how to really leverage it for growth. Um, but I think that you have to like, kind of like, for me, it's like baby steps. Like I need to like first be the person who thinks about it at least once or twice a week. Then I can start getting good about like crafting the content and making it more, um, appealing. It was the same with YouTube, you know, it was just like, okay, you just got to press record and do it. Uh, and then yeah. as you go, you can learn how to get good at it. Um, so that's that's where I'm at with it. With tic- with TikTok, uh, it's a, it's the same thing as Instagram. It's just like it's just like you know a follower once in a while. Um, yeah. I'm at 67 uh, followers. It's not a lot. Um, yeah, right there, and somewhere around there. 
Yeah, yeah. So it, it's I'm really not seeing any like explosive growth uh, or anything like that. But um, that being said, like I like I said earlier in in this chat, we're both sort of I think you know we're we're doing the right thing in in the sense of repurposing content for uh, these platforms. Um, but I think that my strategy moving forward is just like okay, I got to produce content that's specifically for these platforms, not just repurpose content. Um, and yeah. that might make a difference, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So uh, we've talked about how these grow your following. Um, it, it possibly could. It, it certainly is growing my Instagram following. I can see it growing it. I, 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 I see it very, very much more slowly growing it on TikTok. YouTube, I, I have no idea because I don't make you. I don't make content for YouTube Shorts. I'm just repurposing my YouTube videos already on YouTube Shorts. So I, I don't know if that's really doing anything. I think I would have to make goofy uh, things or, or or you know talk to the camera type things that are like that. And and yeah. I don't personally care to watch those that much. So I'm not sure who would want to watch those that much. Maybe the people who follow me would want to watch me a little bit more like off like live uh, you know do a, a quick thing but uh, and i think teaching and entertaining we both are teachers and i've seen also you do more entertaining ones where you're playing the guitar or something like that that's probably on your personal channel though isn't it or is it on yeah Instagram? on the personal yeah instagram like uh, like uh, our uh, even on my first couple TikToks, and they always did better by this is really a, a, another interesting point is that the ones where i'm actually performing and like writing you know playing guitar and stuff like that uh, that those were my first few TikToks. like right i wasn't doing uh, what i'm doing now and they perform yeah. they outperformed the stuff i'm doing now big time i think yeah. that's just yeah maybe just the entertainment value of it is a little bit higher you know so let's let's uh move now to what is probably makes the most sense for this channel and this podcast is how can we make income from it which means when well, there's a couple of different ways we can make income first of all I want to talk about creator funds and every one of these Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, they have they have shorts fun YouTube has a shorts fund. Um, TikTok creator has a TikTok creator fund. IG has a creator fund type of thing. But the thing about these when I went to investigate them, your TikTok account must have at least 10,000 followers. Of course. You must have at least 100,000 views on your videos within the last 30 days. It's like it's like the Facebook things to to monetize. You know, you've got to get up to these big numbers where uh, and and there's most of us who have an account are very casual about this and um, it's kind of like my artist who would put a a music video up on on YouTube send a few people over from Facebook and that's all and they'd get maybe 35 views on their video and over the years maybe it'd get another every you know <laughs> couple of months or something and so there was never a possibility of them monetizing a channel you know on YouTube mm -hmm. because we both know how long that takes to do but uh, and it's going to be the same thing on here you would have to be on another level of, of TikTok creation and For IG sure. creation and YouTube shorts creation than we are this is not for the casual, oh, I'll just do a few of these and maybe it'll bring some people over, that kind of thing, so. Yeah, the, 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 the creators, the, the, that fun st the stuff is just like, that's like a ways away, you know. Um, and. I'm not even really thinking about it in, in those terms at all. It really is just, for me, it's like exposure, exposure, exposure. That's all it is. It's like, let's bring as many people, eyeballs to, to, the, to, my, well, that's what, to my name, to my brand to my music, to my yes. to YouTube, that's all it is. Yeah, it's for brand recognition. Mm -hmm. uh, because even if you do get paid on TikTok, it's like two to four cents for a thousand views. Right, right. So you would think, uh, we think probably, if you get a thousand views on TikTok on one of your videos, you'd be like, whoa, that's awesome. Thousand views. It, it, I'm, it I'm sounds good with that. really nice. Yeah, but it's like it's nothing for TikTok. <laughs> but I it's guess, two you know? to four cents that we can't even get because we're not <laughs> even going to be. Now, if you've got a hundred thousand, that translates more to two hundred to four hundred dollars. You know, from two dollars to two hundred to two hundred to twenty to right. two hundred. So two hundred to four hundred dollars right. for a hundred thousand and a million would be two thousand to four thousand dollars. So that's different when you get on that level where you're hitting. We are some you're hitting them in the millions of, of, of views and then you can do all these things. I don't see me ever do trying to get to that level or wanting to get to that level with these things. Yeah. So that means 
no creator funds money for me uh, on this. Yeah. So then it gets back to brand recognition. It's about people knowing about the Instagram account and hoping that people then come to my YouTube account where I actually can make income with that. And I did a poll um, a while back that I asked uh, people, it got 78 votes. I said, where did you first discover this Make Music Income YouTube channel? And zero per- TikTok was 0%. Uh, Instagram was 3%. And everything else was either a YouTube suggestion, a YouTube search, or another YouTube channel. And, well, that's cool that Instagram uh, was something. Instagram was 3%, which I thought, hey, well, at least, exactly, it was something. Yeah. But TikTok was zero, and I just don't think anybody who goes on TikTok is going there to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And, of course, TikTok doesn't want you going anywhere else, and except unless you advertise. And they now have a robust advertising thing now. I saw it's Andrew Southworth doing a video last night about how yeah. to get people over to your Spotify with TikTok ads. I was like, yes. oh, my gosh. <laughs> now, now TikTok is the place we have to go do ads to get people to our Spotify. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean – if. Yeah, I mean, it, it all makes sense. It it makes sense that they would, uh, and I and I'm I'm glad that they're they're they're. I'm making all for their, adver- marketing. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just you know I'm just saying like like from what I understood from what Andrew was talking about, their their advertising um, uh, capabilities were limited, much much more limited compared to Facebook, right? And so I think they've been slowly yeah. rolling out more features and more. You can get a little bit more specific and granular with who you're you're um, suggest you know you're advertising your content to. Uh, you the Facebook ads manager is insanely robust. Like you can really really get specific uh, with your demographics. Um, so. I'm glad that TikTok is is realizing that there's you know that that they should be following the same um, the, the same path and I and I hope that it becomes a legit place to advertise uh, for Spotify. I'm not sure if it's there yet, but I have I I saw yeah. that Andrew put up that recent video. I haven't seen it yet, but um, yeah. it, it'd be cool. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, so is there income potential in these Instagram? Is there it has Instagram led to any income potential for you? through dms including through dms and through people following the over to your channel or or to your production academy or anything like that yeah like i said it's just really hard to gauge i would have to do a poll like you did and like i mean dms you can tell people get in touch with you they message you and they say i'd like to talk to you about doing a project or something like that have you ever had anyone get in touch with you about a project or anything Yes. Directly. Yes, through Instagram. Yes, um, I, I'm struggling to think of any anything that's actually worked out in in terms of like uh, collabs um, that started through as a DMs through uh, through Instagram or some or some kind of projects. But I've had lots of people communicate with me and send me direct messages on Instagram. Um, that, but for the most part, these people have discovered me on YouTube. So. Yeah. So yeah. the, the thing is, is for me, is really hard to gauge if anyone's actually discovered me on Instagram. I would say probably not because I've only just recently started to like actually post regular content on my Instagram Production Music Academy um, page. My personal Instagram has, you know, like uh, as way more followers, um, but those are those are friends and acquaintances that I've made over the years. And it's not really uh, an account that I've, I've made for advertising. Um, uh, my music is really just kind of personal, like, you know, my life and what I'm doing. Well, let me start to wrap this up by just talking about my current short, strat- short strategy or vertical video strategy, because I, it, it's pointless to talk about income potential really at Instagram, YouTube uh, or TikTok or Facebook. Now, YouTube, I could see shorts affecting one way or the other, the channel. Maybe it could affect the channel in a positive way. Maybe, you know, it would, like you said, bring sh- the shorts. They, someone would find it on me on shorts talking about something they'd never find my long content. And so then they would go follow my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So, or it could like algorithmically hurt the channel somehow because you're doing it wrong. You know, you, I don't know. I, 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 would, I would guess best case it would help. Uh, in Facebook, it's just gonna be important. Our Facebook and Instagram important for people that do business with you and and would that lead to business that way facebook used to lead to business for me with groups and things like that instagram i I 
think I've had a few DMs where somebody wanted to talk to me about something, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So income potential, I, I just don't, I don't really see any. But my current short strategy is try to do one to two per week. That's pulled from my YouTube content. That's the easy way to do it. I don't have to make new content. I just have to find an interesting thing, especially from deep in a video where maybe somebody had quit watching a long video at that time. Uh, and they go out to Instagram and TikTok, and I don't do a YouTube short of that. Instead uh, of YouTube shorts, I think a better thing to do is use the community tab and push the actual video again or push a timestamp and say, hey, in case you didn't see me talk about this particular thing, click this link and that link takes them right to a timestamp of the video and they see that. I think if I did a YouTube short, I would do something like you did where I'd make a specific video that's not part of other content on my YouTube channel. Right. And right. I would well, have to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 my strategy That's is my going strategy. to try to be uh, to do two YouTube regular videos a week, and then I'm going to try to post a short uh, on Fridays um, on on the channel. I'm going to see how that goes, and hopefully it won't mess with the with the channel. Hopefully it'll only make things better. And this, I should also mention that this that when I do a song, like when I finish a song, part of that uh, the the list that we were talking about early, earlier in this uh, chat like on that list is repurpose the content for for short. So I'm going to try to make yes. a short for every song that I write. It's going to be part of that to do cool. list. Um, and I'll try to make try to make it entertaining. I'm not very uh, funny or, or entertaining in my mind. So um, I'm trying to uh, yeah find a way to, to make them enjoyable to watch in like a minute. Um, so that's that's my challenge for myself. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, as my wrap up here, I'm still not convinced that shorts do anything but waste my time. To be honest with you, they pay nothing, which is less than YouTube videos or or even doing stock music. Mm -hmm. Uh, And again, you know, stock music for me is just a shade above some of the other people who are following this channel or following us and who do stock music who get 50 bucks a month. And I'm I'm lucky enough to get, you know, five times that probably all told. But at worst, I get paid by those things, even though they take up my time. Yeah, uh, I got paid today by two stock libraries. You know, it's just it's in, it's already in my PayPal account. It's not much, but it's enough to pay for my car tags. You know, so that is something. And I spend time making that stock music or dealing with stock music. But is the time I spend making and posting and watching the stats on TikTok and Instagram? worth it i just don't know i guess it doesn't hurt like you said it it only brings brand recognition but time is a valuable thing it is and it is, speaking it certainly of that is. and I'm, <laughs> i don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole in in uh my attempt to like blow up the channel through shorts uh but i do want to experiment with it i don't think this experiment is conclusive uh, or it, it's not, it's certainly, I'm not at the end of my experiment. I, I can't really say what one way or the other, uh, whether it's uh, going to help me or not, but let's revisit this uh, topic at some point, um, yeah. and, and give me a few months to, to put out these shorts and see what happens. And then we can, I'll take it from there, I guess. We're going to have to do an episode where we just revisit all the other episodes and say, <laughs> did this work? Did this work? We yeah, talked true. about this. What happened with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are always fun to do results videos. Well, It is the bewitching hour for me, time for me to move on here with my day, but uh, this has been a great conversation. I hope this has been interesting for you to listen to or watch, and I would love your comments below in what we're uh, talking about here. Do you do short media, short vertical video media that, uh, that pushes your music out, that pushes your brand out? And if you do, do you have success, and where do you have the most success? That'd be an yes. interesting let us uh, know. poll to put out, and and uh, so. and let and let me know what you thought of uh, of my short. This will be on uh, on yeah, Monday. By that Throw time, it in the comments. Can you can you can <laughs> you can judge my very first uh, YouTube short. Let me know what you thought. I, you I just don't it. think of them as that much different than Instagram or or TikTok short videos. You know, I think they're about the same, except for the fact that you made this specifically for I, your YouTube audience. That's what I'm saying. It's okay. yeah, it's more specifically for YouTube. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but I'll post it to Instagram and, and TikTok as well. We'll yeah. see if it does well there. Of course. All right, man. Well, good conversation. Thanks everybody for watching and for listening. Yeah. And make sure you leave a comment below or go to if you're listening to this in a podcast, do not leave a comment. 
because uh, you can't, go to our <laughs> YouTube, and uh, this will be on the Make Music Income channel. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear what you say. Otherwise, have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Absolutely. Bye, guys.